This morning on Daybreak, it is Severe Weather Awareness Week, and Nixa Public Schools are making sure to keep their kids safe. And inspired by her son born with disabilities, we'll show you what remarkable women finalist Jamie McGranahan is doing for our community. Also, the federal government is working to set up more funding to help fight against the coronavirus. We all have that and more coming up this morning for you here on Daybreak. Welcome back and thanks for joining us for the second hour of Daybreak. It's Tuesday, March 3rd. I'm Lauren Barnes, And I'm Joe Morano. As we are moving along, we finally have had some warm weather. Nice stretch of it, right? Did you sleep in a little bit or got to catch up on sleep last night? <laughs> yes, no, the sleep wasn't disturbed and waking me up like it was yeah. Sunday night and Monday. So yeah, very I'm good telling to you, I'm already right? planning on a walk or a run after the show. I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> Elisa is live out at the National Weather Service today, but she has good news, I think, on our <laughs> Tuesday forecast. Elisa, how's it going? Yeah, good morning, guys. We've been here all morning. So it's Severe Weather Awareness Week, and we've got our tornado drill at 10 a.m. And you saw in the 5 o'clock hour where we did a balloon launch, and I want to give you an update on what the data is coming in pretty quick and what it's looking like. You see that red line is temperature, the blue line is dew point, and we're seeing a pretty dry air mass out there. And again, we use this when we have severe weather because this will tell us how moist the air mass is and how unstable it is or how um, much juice and fuel there is for severe weather, right? So those become crucial, and that's why we do the balloons more than once. Well, we do them more than once every day, but when we have a tornado day, we do them sometimes three or four times a day. So some really cool things that we're doing here this morning. Let's look at your forecast. We do have some really quiet weather out there this morning, just a couple of clouds, and things, again, are uh, dry and smooth sailing as you head out the door. We're looking at these temperatures about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than they were yesterday, and we're starting out in the 30s. It's 37 degrees in Springfield, 41 in Branson, and 43 in Harrison. So dry roads all day today. Again, we'll have lots of sunshine, no commute hazards, and we'll have sunshine by dismissal with that temperature at 62 degrees. Again, we're back here at the National Weather Service. We're going to chat with them coming up in a couple of minutes. Joe, Warren. All right, thank you, Elisa. We also have some education coverage about weather. It's always important to be prepared to find the most secure shelter available no matter where you are. That's right. Color 10's Nigel McDonald visited Nixa Public Schools and joins us this morning to lay out the district's severe weather plan. Nigel. Well, good morning, Lauren and Joe. Nixa Public Schools has four FEMA safe rooms that can house between 7,000 and 8,000 people from the community. Zach Rance of Nixa Public Schools says the Joplin tornado really changed the way the district looked at severe weather readiness. We had the ability to learn a lot from what happened in Joplin. Rance says this included updating the district's tornado drills. We've moved a lot of our students out of the hallways um, across our buildings. They're either in FEMA safe rooms or interior classrooms or they're in the hallways um, if that's the best place for them to go. He says the FEMA safe rooms are also open to the community. They're open as soon as a tornado watch is issued and so we have volunteers that, that man those and are there all the way through the tornado watch or the tornado warning to make sure our, our community has a safe place to go. Rand says it's important to bring things like food, water, and medications with you. The idea behind the safe rooms is for people to have a place to go before the severe weather hits. He says plan to be there for at least several hours. We've had those tornado watches and mornings that have gone, you know, 8 to 12 hours. Um, we've had some that are really short. Nixa Assistant Superintendent Kevin Kopp says the district is working to increase the number of buildings that are storm safe. One of the ways we do that is by hardening the structures that we have. Kopp says there's current work underway to do just that at one of the district's elementary schools. We're adding 10 classroom additions and we will be making several of those classrooms storm ready so that the entire building can fit into those classrooms in the event of a storm. Pop says the district's long-term plan includes creating storm safe places at all of its campuses. Well, I also reached out to Springfield Public Schools for its severe weather plan. District officials tell me each school has a crisis response plan specific to its campus. They say SBS also coordinates with the National Weather Service if a watch or warning are issued. School leaders will implement their response procedures. 
Nigel McDonald reporting this morning. The federal government is trying to set up more federal funding to fight the coronavirus. Drury Poli Sci Professor Dr. Dan Ponder tells us how the virus could become a major campaign issue heading back into November. He believes people from both parties have already had their opinions on how COVID-19 is being handled. Some Democrats say the president has put the nation in a vulnerable state by getting rid of Obama era positions dedicated to fight infectious diseases. Republicans say the Democrat are the Democrats are making it a bigger deal than it is and that the situation is being monitored. If it spreads, I think um, it's going to definitely be a big part of, of the rhetoric in the election. If it does spread and it depends on what the administration tries to do, I think obviously you're going to see Democratic candidates make the case that not only was the country not prepared for this, but actions by President Trump in the last few years actively made us uh, much more vulnerable. If they're able to contain it, um, my guess is that'll be a much more, obviously that'll be a much more uh, advantage to the Trump side. Dr. Ponder also says the virus could eventually impact the budget and reallocation of money and where it'll go, depending on if the virus spreads more and how serious it gets. Also, a special committee met in Jefferson City to discuss the state's plan to handle the coronavirus. And while they do not expect a major outbreak, they still believe it's important to be prepared. The director of Missouri's Health and Senior Services, Randall Williams, says he's met with federal and other state health directors. He believes Missouri is well prepared in the event of an outbreak. On January 27th, we stood up, probably one of the first in the country, our incident management team, and we've been meeting every day since then. They also discussed the potential concerns with a shortage of medical equipment from quarantines in China and also how companies should react if their employees contract the illness. Also this morning, throughout the month of February, you've seen the stories of our Remarkable Women finalists throughout the Ozarks. Our fourth and final Remarkable Women finalist is Jamie McGranahan. Now, her search for an education for her son, Connor, who's deaf and autistic, landed her family in Rogersville when Connor was little. Since then, she's devoted to making sure people with disabilities here in the Ozarks don't have to relocate in order to excel. I don't feel remarkable at all. Just on the other side of this warm-up activity, Jamie McGranahan's fan club figured she might say that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Jamie's exactly. groupies. Yeah, her groupies, exactly. Her tribe. Her tribe. They're the moms of students with disabilities in Jamie's theater class. We think that Jamie's a miracle worker. Yes. And they waited around to tell me what Jamie was too humble to say about herself. Brings out their own personalities. She's just really good at what she does. In this very moment, Did you see what doing? she's teaching emotion. One, two, three, go! The exercise comes with a deeper lesson about life. Here, Austin, what do you see? Tackle topics like bullying and diversity. And with this adult group, a couple years ago we had some students that the parents were sick. What do you see? And as adults with disabilities, that's not something everybody always talks to them about. What does Bobby feel? So I thought it's my job to conquer this, to talk about this with them. And so we did. And we talked about death and we talked about stress and the stress that comes along as our parents age. And so we created a show that was stress and the sake ni monster. The kids just, you see them blossom. All right, everybody find a partner. When the music dies down, and theater class is over. <laughs> the show goes on. So many times where we've had students or families that have come back and said, my son's in his 20s and he's never been able to um, walk the stairs multiple ways. And he can now because of theater class, because of dance class. So we had students that were in a music class that both said they've never had a friend before. It's pretty cool when they go out for their first friend time at McDonald's and just play. Students taking with them skills for the real world. Oh, Carrie's got a happy. And Jamie's motto, we're all different, but we're all kind of the same. I don't feel remarkable at all. I just feel like I'm the person that was created uh, to do what I'm doing.
If you are watching closely, you may have even seen Jamie's son Connor in class. As a reminder, this Friday, March 6th, we will announce the overall winner of our Remarkable Women contest who is going to the Mel Robbins show in New York. And that is a very special show this Friday that we have planned for you. That's right. A montage of our Remarkable Women finalists. And we, of course, will announce a winner. I think what I liked about your story just now is you really mentioned, uh, you really showed how, remar how remarkable a person can be with humility. You started and yes. ended it with that, right? Yeah, and, and that's a common theme we've seen from all these women. They're like, I don't know why I was nominated. I'm like, well, I can tell you 10 reasons, you know, <laughs> just from being with you for a few minutes. So we're really excited. Yeah, and we'll take you through the women who have made impacts in our lives as well then. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Elisa Rafa will also be part of that discussion on Friday. We got to get out to her, though. She's at the National Weather Service this morning. Yeah, we're talking about Severe Weather Awareness Week. Last year was a very active tornado season for us. We had 65 tornadoes confirmed in Missouri. This shows um, how many confirmed by office. Only seven confirmed in Kansas City by the office and 47 confirmed by our Springfield office right here. So very active. Doug behind me is getting ready with some flight potential graphics for us. We're going to talk to him just in a couple of minutes. Your full forecast is next.